Hey, and welcome to Fan Talk. Today we are going to cover the box office weekend of September 27th through 29th. We're yep. going to talk about uh, some uh, movie and entertainment news and uh, talk about uh, some uh, comedy movie about a clown coming out yeah, this weekend. Yeah, some clown film. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't include a red balloon. Yeah, right. <laughs> No, nope, there's no red balloon in that. I just had to think of it. And there's not. <laughs> uh, looking back to last weekend, Abominable. Yeah, of, you I, got I, it. I wrote this it. month, man. Woo! I wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> uh, open at number one. Solid uh, opening for this movie, uh, being actually an original idea as well. Besides the fact there's been several other Yeti movies out in the last year, yeah. this storyline was actually was an original. Open to $20 million. Um, solid opening for the movie. It's got some work to do to make its uh, budget of $75 million back, but it's off to a solid start. Yeah. As long as it does well internationally, and it has a little bit of legs here, I think we're doing okay. It has a couple weeks until um, Adam's family comes out and gives it some competition in the kids' market. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to that one. It's been a while since we've seen the Adam's family on the big screen, so... da 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 Anyway, <laughs> number two, uh, second week out, uh, Downton Abbey. Uh, it's up to $113 million worldwide on an $8 million budget. So we can look forward to another Downton Abbey film probably in the next two years. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and if, uh, if they do anything like a James Cameron style, they'll be making three, four, and five at the same time. Yeah, right. Just film them all. <laughs> <laughs> Before they all start dying. Yeah. Uh, number three, uh, uh, Hustler is with an awesome... Uh, you know, actually, it went from fifth back to third. And, yeah. Uh, it only had a 32% drop. I mean, it's got some saying power. And I can see why. I went and watched this film, and uh, it's actually a really good, it's a good film. You know, so it's put together well. I have to say, as far as J-Lo films go, this is probably the best one yet. So, I mean, okay. this is something she should be proud of. It's a good film. This is your new favorite instead of The Wedding Planner? Yes, definitely beats the wedding planner. <laughs> yeah, and it's actually doing pretty well. Uh, Ninety-eight million on a twenty million dollar budget. It's definitely now solidly in the black. Yeah, uh, it our favorite, other favorite clown movie. Uh, number four, a uh, good staying power. Uh, Four hundred twenty-three million worldwide. That's yeah. uh, not quite where the first one was, but for a sequel and for not as well known. Uh, the second half. Well, yeah, the, the second, half. the second, even the original film, the second half was a lot like rougher film. And of course, you wouldn't watch this. This is one of them we watched together. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the uh, second half was very entertaining. I mean, it was. Uh, well, they, they got some good casting to balance that out. Yeah, and they put it just it was put together a lot better. And the end monster, it was conceived better than the original tv film it was just all all around it was really good so i see why it's doing well and also once again we've talked about this many times this time of year is a good time of year for these kinds of films and then releasing where it is uh when it, they did it's kind of allowed it to have a little more legs and there's this movie's gonna stretch out throughout october it's gonna be lots farther. of money yeah uh number five is that uh, to the stars i'm sorry that's ad astra yeah. um it uh, did better than the other uh, action movie that came out last weekend. Uh, Ad Astra is now at $93 million on about an $85 million budget. It might be all right. It might be all right. But, I was a little worried for them. But it's not... It's going to be close. It's going yeah. to see how well, it legs we'll out see, worldwide. We'll see how it legs out. But the big thing about that film is I think that like everything we said and I think people have pretty much agreed with, that it's a great science fiction film. It's not action-packed. It's not... People walking out of that one like, that was a good, very pretty movie I just saw. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot like going and watching Gravity. I'm like, it's well, very... Gra Gravity at least had the human connection to it. it but it, as far as the, the cinematography, yeah, you're right. Uh, like, that was a very pretty movie. I didn't really feel like I connected with it. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people had that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, just Brad Pitt's very... I mean, he did a great job, but the way that movie portrayed his character he, he was played, very... Yeah, he played the character perfectly in fact that was probably an award-winning performance as far as him not being your typical brad pitt. lovable brad pitt he played a completely different character i mean even when he met uh, played meet joe black and he was <laughs> supposed to be very dry he was still charming he had that charm to him that you still liked the character right this character it's not like you don't like him you just can't ever really humanly connect with him right Anyway, so. but uh, he did better than the number six spot Rambo, uh, which had a 54% drop. Uh, he's at $60 million, uh, worldwide on a $50 million budget. He might be all right, too, but this is also probably going to be the last Rambo movie. Well, I mean, it was called Last Blood. It was supposed to be the last Rambo movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that was well-titled. Yeah, we're well-titled film. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and extend this to number seven because uh, Judy. Judy. Uh, the um, uh, Judy Garland, Garland film, yeah. Yep, Judy Garland. 
<laughs> Do I think what's her name? Judy. <laughs> Girl. So easy. Uh, it was played by uh, Renee Zellweger. It's getting a massive, uh, uh, good, massive buzz. It's good criticism for her, a... or good, good uh, word of mouth and everything for her performance and her singing. Um, uh, I've been seeing actually a lot more commercials on TV for it now after this first weekend. Yeah. And like, like I said, uh, this is one of another one of those films this year we see move up in theaters instead of down. I bet it's opened at 461. I mean, take a look at this. So the yeah. first top uh, six movies: 4,200, 3,400, 3,500, 3,600, 3,461. And she uh, or it made uh, 2.9 million off of that. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And they're going to go up in theaters. Yeah, it's going to go up in theaters now. It was a good play. And, good play. And, and it was a good play, and, but I kind of called that. And I, we we're seeing a lot more of that. And believe me, at first, even you and me, we were, we were both like, this is kind of unusual. You're going to start seeing a lot more of this. A medium opening. Yeah, it's it's a smart thing from a financial standpoint. It makes a lot of sense because you create more buzz for the film. When a film, you go to watch it, and it's a little bit harder to find, but you're hearing good things about it, uh, it creates more more buzz. And so more you talk about it to more people, more people want to go and see it. Yeah, you know? If they'd and, opened this movie up to even 2,000 theaters, it would have been like, oh, it didn't do very well. Yeah. But, but now it's created a lot of buzz, and it actually will create more money. It's smart. It's a very smart play on, on some of these more artistic films that you know are going to do would do really well, but aren't going to handle that wide release competing against movies, big, giant blockbusters. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's actually brilliant. So. And coming up on this next weekend, uh, the only movie in wide release is Joker, starring Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, yep. And directed by Todd Phillips of The Hangover fame. And uh, well, we'll do a separate re- a review on that film, but uh, I think it's going to be doing solid this weekend. It's expected to be in the sixty-eight million dollar range, with a lot of analysts thinking it'll go over the hundred million uh, range for opening weekend domestically, uh, with a budget of about sixty million. It's going to do well out of the gate. Yeah, and, and, and having seen it, the budget of sixty million is just fine. There's, I mean, obviously there's going to be special effects throughout it, and especially some practical effects, but it's there's no, you know. No green uh, CGI suits of superheroes going around. Yes. Yes, and and this film, uh, the buzz around it, like we said, it was really high, and then it kind of dwindled down. But even me, as a person who did not want to see a backstory in the Joker, I did not. I'm stoked about this movie. I'm, I'm ready to go see it. I'm going to see it tomorrow morning, and uh, so we can do our review for it for you tomorrow. But uh, <laughs> I'm stoked to go and watch it. But. I'm still critical of it, but that being said, I don't see how anybody can talk bad about the acting in this film, even without seeing it yet. I've heard a little bit what you told me, but let's just be honest, Joaquin Phoenix is a fantastic actor. He's a method actor, so he really falls into these, dives into these roles. And I... You, you've seen some of his movies that were like, eh, so-so, but I mean, most of his characters are just phenomenal, and I don't see how he's not going to really sell this film. If it wasn't for the, and I'm not going to get into spoilers or anything, but if it wasn't for the obvious name attachments of who this character is and what universe he lives in, this would almost feel like a very art house movie. Uh, just the way it's done. So yeah, I've heard it's a very, it's a very uh, gri- gritty movie, which kind of almost makes you leave the fil- theater feeling dirty. And I've heard that it's deeply disturbing, and I've heard it's one of those films that it could almost stand alone as a film about, you know, the dissension into madness uh, with out even having the Joker be a part of it. it could, Without, uh, if it was like a completely random character. Yeah, yeah I just, just a, a, you know, a person, you know, it would still be a good film. Yeah. So I, I'm excited. I'll just see it tomorrow and then uh, I'll drop my review and you and me both can pitch our opinions. Yeah. Which, uh, the early uh, ticket sales on it, it's outpacing um, uh, it too, uh, which opened to 91 million. So mm-hmm. I think it's going to have a pretty solid open up, at least 100. Rotten Tomatoes has dropped steadily uh, from the upper 80s down to down to 70. But I think that's just kind of like all the criticism, different things about the politics of it and uh, so forth. Uh, coming out the high of the film festival and that doesn't mean that this is bad it just means that you're getting more than just professional critics reviewing it yeah and you're gonna get all being a comic book movie you're gonna get all different opinions of it all different opinions like i'm sure like we'll go into it you're gonna have a like probably an, an initial higher opinion of it because not being as big of a comic book nerd you're not gonna have any of that stuff dragging your opinion down where me i'm going to go in there a little cynical from the beginning and it's like i'm something that happen. i went in a pretty blank slate on this one um i mean there's some comic movies i go in with a high opinion there's some i come in like let's eh, see how it is this is one i was like i was really was a blank slate 
I mean, I've heard, I didn't read too much about it beforehand. Uh, I, all I've seen was a couple of trailers, and I was like, let's see what they did. <laughs> um, jumping into some uh, news, uh, we have a uh, fourth season of one of our favorite shows uh, just announced, uh, with a new trailer out for it. Stranger Things. Stranger Things. Yep, yep. looking forward to that. Seeing if old Hopper is still around, which based on the end credit scene on the end of the last, third season, uh, my best guess is yes anyway. Plus, yes. the actor's going to be around anyway, but still... I love to see how we get there. Yeah, it's. I'm not gonna lie. Out of all the stuff that's come out, all the stuff, there's some great things that have come out in the last two years, folks. I mean, if you really start diving into some of these streaming networks and these TV series, I mean, the quality that we have now compared to even when we were younger is fantastic. But Stranger Things is just a whole other level that's of a, fantastic. Yeah, that's right up there. I yeah, mean, that's up there. Like you know. I'm going to call some criticism on these ones, but, you know, love to the levels of, like, Sopranos, of, like, you know, Band of Brothers, you know, mm -hmm. some, some of the best uh, shows that you've ever seen. Yeah, and it's just, and it's sci-fi, and it's also a period kind of a film. Kind horror feel Yeah, sci-fi, horror, and then, like, a period feel to it that is so believable. I haven't seen a film that, like, you actually feel like you're there, and you're, like, almost, you can smell the 80s when you're watching it, right? <laughs> Since Back to the Future. I mean, like, some of these other films, like... Like, that were literally filmed around that time. You know, yeah. it wasn't, like, a big stretch that you're just like, man, this feels like, like I'm there. You know, I feel like, I, you know, whenever you watch The Breakfast Club or something, I mean, you feel like And those were made, time. and they weren't trying to dress up like the yeah. 80s. They are just they, dressing normal. They were dressing normal. That was the 80s, yeah. yeah. I mean, it just it feels so natural. It's great, and I'm super excited. Uh, and, of course... I would like to have a whole episode where we just dive into some Stranger Things, but definitely when this comes out, uh, we'll be doing a review because when Stranger Things hits, I'm that nerd that stays up all night because here where we live, it hits at 2 in the morning. So at <laughs> 2 in the morning, I can start streaming. <laughs> but check out, we'll be uh, doing a reaction to the uh, preview here pretty yeah, soon. Yeah, it's real soon. Uh, another news, this one I just jumped out of me more than actually news. Uh, uh, Scorsese, uh, gave a criticism saying that Marvel movies, and he also said he hasn't seen them, uh, it's not real cinema. It's not real cinema, yep. Okay, I get that he, first of all, nothing about it, Scorsese, his movies are fantastic. Yes. But he is looking at cinema as an art form yes. and uh, something to convey an honest or a human level message. And I think he's missing the point that it can also be an entertainment uh, uh, factor too and then also people can derive uh, entertainment you know um, connections laughter all the things that you get from all these different other kinds of movies rather than just the art house stuff yes and well, obviously Marvel movies are cinema yes and, and and it cracks me up there's a lot of things like since Marvel films have come out and I get it it's been immensely popular and uh, it'll draw and, criticism and, 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 from those like artistic types yes and, and it there is I would be lying if I didn't say there's a bit of a cash grab to some of these films. You know, obviously Disney is cashing in. Obviously, their business, they have to. Their business, they have to. Um, so there is some of that to it. There's a little truth to that, of course. But it's also like trying to smack in the face these huge fans who have loved this stuff their whole lives. Obviously, comic books and comic story, uh, comic book stories have been very popular for a very, very long time. It's its own art form and mm -hmm. its own methods of storytelling. Yep. And in fact, a lot of people argue that superheroes are really Americans' versions of... Mythology. Theology, mythology, yeah, of, of gods and and things of that nature. For the lower and, yeah, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's really a part of our culture. So the next step, obviously, would be taking it to that next level of entertainment or that next artistic form, which would be film. And Marvel has managed to do it in a way that, in my opinion, has been better than anybody else has put it together thus far. Yeah. Now. Not taken away. I, I have really started to sharpen on the DC side. They've started to sharpen up, uh, especially on some of their television stuff. Has been really good. They have individual things that are fantastic, and I won't take away from that. No. Their uh, DC EU is a uh, dumpster fire as far as a shared universe. Yeah. Well, also a lot of the problems with Disney is the absolute drive. Or I mean, sorry, with DC 
see as their absolute drive to compete with the Marvel Universe. They just need to do their own thing. Yeah, and, the, and they made a lot of big mistakes. Like, uh, I mean, to the point that they started losing big name actors because they're like, this is all over the place. Uh, from them saying, hey, we're not going to do this, specifically no humor because uh, that's what's in Marvel. Marvel told a joke. That. We don't want to do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that stuff. That's ridiculous. I mean, and then you had Shazam come out and it was a great movie because they kind of were like, we're just going to do our own thing. Yeah, and it was using a, using it was a uh, lower shelf character and yeah. it did fine. And it was great. And then, you know, on the flip side, whenever, you know, uh, Justice League, there was a lot of other things planned. They mashed that movie together and shoved it out. Without any introduction, backstories. With trying to compete with the Infinity War, and that's what that was all about. It was trying to compete with that and film. Avengers and they, in general. Yeah, and they put that stuff out before they had something really good put together, and it was crap. No. And it really hurt them. And that's the big thing. The Take your time, thing. make good movies. And Martha. <laughs> Don't even. Don't even. Why do you say, why did I say that name? Your mom's the same name as my mom. Oh, my let's God, be friends. Let's be best friends. <laughs> Everything I thought about you being super dangerous because like, you're an alien and you could literally destroy the whole earth. I didn't know your mom's name was the same as mine. They need to check into it. Do The Rock and Vin Diesel's mom have the same name? I don't know. I think but that I heard that they patched things up. The possibly. saving grace for for Batman Superman that would have been like made made everything better is if they just looked at each other and would have been like, "Did we just become best friends?" Yup. <laughs> and I'm like, "Yes." And then just look at the camera. Yeah, no, step brothers. <laughs> No, actually, my joke there was uh, <laughs> apparently The Rock and Vin Diesel have uh, gotten better. Uh, yeah. One of them posted, like, you know, looking forward to working on the next movie. Like, The uh, Rock posted that he's looking forward to working on the next movie and, like, wish, like, uh, said looking forward to being back with Toretto and all the gang again and yeah. kind of, like, gave some praise to Vin Diesel. I'm like, that's something. Yeah. So maybe something worked out there. Well, you know, in the end, I'll say this time and time again, and people, we can argue about it as much as you want. Personalities, conflicts happen. You know, you work in any job, and you're close to somebody long enough. If you've ever had a roommate, which I'm sure a lot of you have, you might have loved them when you got together. At some point, you want to kill them. <laughs> but, but, but then, if you're good friends, it patches back up. And in the end, in this kind of situation, it's all about money. Oh, yeah. It's and... all about money. And if somebody's like, hey, you know, you can not make money anymore if you can't put your ego aside. Uh, you know, usually you're going to be like, "That's a lot of money. I can put my ego aside." So, do you hear that the uh, Terminator might change, uh, revert its rights after the next one comes out because it's the con or the licensing's up, licensing, and up. they don't yeah. work it out, then it goes back to the original co-writer Gail uh, Hurd, who co-wrote it with uh, James Cameron. James so. Cameron, yeah. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if that happens. I'm sure once again, money's going to play into it, and studios will buy what they need to. It depends on how the next movie does. Yes, so, next movie the bomb, they'll be like, take it. Well, and my whole thing is with this next one, and I, I've we've had a little bit of criticism about this. Is there's a lot of people out there that just think that you know, this is going to be crap, and this, that, and the other. I am not one of those. I think that we're looking for a rejuvenation in the Terminator, and I think that's what we're going to get with this film. I totally hope. But that being said, I still almost feel like you know, with Terminator Two, it was like maybe you just leave it lie. You know, you don't have to keep making sequels just because it's, it makes money. And, and I understand that's their job. Once again, it's that cash grab. Right? Doesn't mean you need to keep making films. They Sometimes just to, you just stop for the art's sake of it. You know, unless they can add something decent to the story, which is what yeah. we're going to need to see. Uh, they are coming out with a uh, Born Identity uh, or a Born Six movie, which mm -hmm. is now going to connect in with the uh, Treadstone TV yeah, show. Yeah, it's going to take finally. Yeah, because uh, Treadstone all along has had the rules like don't mention Jason Bourne. Yeah. Uh, now they're finally going to actually connect it all together. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they do that. Um, the uh, uh, there's a Clerks uh, three on the horizon now. Yeah, and I was reading a little bit about that, and that was one of those that was going to happen, and then it wasn't because, as he said, it takes you know four people four people to make that movie. And uh, him, oh, um, uh, Mosier, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not Mosier, that's, that's true, sir. Uh, yeah. Him, uh, Jay, uh, and then the actors behind Randall, Randall and, and, Dante. and Dante, and Randall. You know, like there was never anything ill will said, anything bad, but it no. was it's anyway that he but just him. didn't want to do it. Right. And did you read the tweet by Kevin Smith, which sheds some light into that without actually saying it? Uh -uh, I didn't read uh, that. He's basically announced that, you know, Clerks 3 is going to happen now. All the four are yeah, involved. Yeah, they're all involved. I and uh, the uh, basically he said, like, I patched things up with uh, Ben Affleck earlier this year, and now him. Yeah. So it sounds so, like there's a bit of bad blood. There's then he, probably a little bit of bad blood between them. And then they got patched up. So, you know, 
Good for them. Yeah. Well, and like we said, like, I'm sure money is a factor, but with Kevin Smith, it's one of those good things that I feel like he's very honest and open about like his relationships and things. And he's been like, the a lot of stuff I've said. He's like, I've seen him say, it's like, you know, listen, sometimes you open your mouth and words come out and you're you just, just misinterpreted like, you, yeah, sometimes. and you just misinterpret it or, or you just don't even realize what you're saying is going to hurt somebody. You I've know? seen him and, watching uh, his uh, Batman Beyond show. Like he, you know, really seems to cover himself now. Like, oh, don't take this the wrong way, internet. Yeah. <laughs> like when he's about to say something, which yeah. is great. Um, also, it looks like, uh, reading the tea leaves, uh, on 10-14, we might get another full trailer for Rise of Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker. So. And it makes sense because from everything we've seen and, and talked about and leaks and this, that, and the other, it does appear that a lot of the leaks and everything were very strategic in manner to kind of start getting fans' ideas along with the reshoots that were going on to help them piece together a final product because they hadn't yet. And this was as of last month. They had not pieced together a final film. So... It would make sense now that they have probably started yeah, they need to, to start making wrap copies that up, and they, that's probably like they finally got the information they needed to piece together a, a film they think the fans <laughs> are going to love, and we'll get a trailer, and hopefully everybody will be happy. I'm a little worried. I'm a little skeptical, but I will say it. I'm going to go see it, and I'm going to cross my fingers and hope, hope, a new hope. Yes, <laughs> beat me to it. All right, and with that, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe.